Okay, so we've got our pond sitting just about the way we want it. The bench is sitting to the front so you can sit. Of course, you're looking right into the house from here. And But before we go any further, we're going to put the benches aside and get ready to put in the liner. Now the liner is an EPDM pond guard. We call it a rubber liner. That's how it's referred to. And it's very pliable. It stretches. It's very strong. Very strong. But you can puncture it and you can cut it. So if you have a sharp bottom, any stones or protrusions may puncture your liner and you don't want to have to fix your liner. So with your pond kit is a styrofoam based foam liner. And if you're setting up on fairly smooth floors or concrete, this is all you really need. Now we're setting up today on top of sand and gravel, and the gravel has some small stones with sharp points. So what you can do, and it's not included with your kit, but what a lot of guys will do is they'll take a chunk of old carpet liner, under pad, and use your template to cut out the shape that you need for your pond and then you just simply lay that into the bottom get it nice and flush all the way around inside and your liner will sit down on that and that that will help protect your liner from any problems that might happen inside the pond you can kill it there, Kim. and you could also if you didn't have grout or uh, underlay you could use a cut up some cardboard and put that down in there if you're concerned. And the liner itself comes already pre-built, it's already rolled, folded and rolled when you get it. So you simply open it up and as the ponds get bigger, so do the liners. This liner is a 300 gallon size so it's fairly heavy. And there's foam just protecting it for transport. The liner itself has its own little frame that we've attached to it. We use black nylon rivets and aluminum rivets in the corners for strength. You just open it set it into the pond just like so and on the corner of your liner there's these straps. These straps are not meant to carry any weight. They're just there to help you line up your liner when you're setting up your pond. So I'm just going to loosely hook them over the frame in each corner. Just go all the way around and hook up your, your straps. Just get your liner roughly into place and then we're going to straighten it and get it in just the way it should be. You want to get your liner in flush. You want to get it firm on the bottom and you want to have enough height on the sides. The water is heavy. The kit itself isn't all that heavy but once you add the water to it you're adding a lot of weight. 300 gallons of water is roughly 2400 pounds. So a little more than that actually. So what I'm trying to do here is get this liner flush and tucked in all the way around. So to do that, I'm going to pull this up so that this top of the liner is up just underneath the inside edge of this top rail. I'm just going to hook it. Again, you don't want to get it too tight. You don't have to pull hard. You just want to get it lined up properly. Same thing here. Hook it there so that it pulls this up and hook it in place all the way around. And what I'll do is I'll take this strap and I'm trying to get it flush under here so I'm going to pull it up there and just hook it down so it holds it in place on this side. So rather than come over this edge, I'm going to come over the top, and pull that up, and then just hold it in place, just like that. 
Now once you get that like that, you want to go around on the inside. And you just want to get it flush all the way around on the bottom, especially along the edges. As the water fills it, it will actually push your liner a little bit in between each rail. So you need a little bit of slack. There's always going to be a little bit of slack in your liner. It allows for expansion in the summer, contraction in the winter for us up here in Canada. And I'm just going to keep getting this flush all the way around it. The straps really help if you're setting this up by yourself because they'll help hold everything in place for you while you straighten everything out. You want it fairly flat in the bottom, so if you have any extra material in there, you want to just smooth it out so when you put your pump in, it's sitting on a nice level surface on the bottom. So if you have any slack, you just work it into the edges, leave a little bit along the edges. You want to get it fairly even all the way around because once you put the water in, everything's going to stay pretty much right where you put it. And we're ready at this point to go ahead and start adding the water. So as we say in our website, there's no plumbing required for any of these ponds. You just simply fill it one time with a garden hose. So you can see here the hose is slowly going to fill our pond. We're using a secondary well, so this is uh, non-chlorinated water, so it'll be safe for fish and plants. And I'm just having a look here so you can see the water is spreading itself fairly evenly over the bottom. So it's not perfectly level, but it's real close, and that's certainly going to be good enough. You can see, again, we've got the bottom of the pond real nice and smooth. We've got little bulges around the edges, so we've worked the excess rubber material along the edges, and as the pond fills up, then it will slowly push that rubber out a little bit into in between the various rails, and it'll just push it in from the inside a little bit. And by the time we're full, we should have nice smooth walls. So we're just going to keep the straps on for now that are holding that liner in place while we lined it up. The straps will not support the weight of the water, that's for sure. And as it fills up, you'll see me disconnect these straps. And it's actually the water pushing the liner against the frame that's holding the liner in place. The liner actually sits independently of the frame. It's not attached directly to the frame.